Mayor just, Mayor just came back from Santa Rosa, where his daughter lives. He needed a vacation after the Israeli Film Festival. So that Abba, Mayor. Thank you. You are a mensch for all seasons. Thank you. I'm going to make it short, very short. Thank you, Stephen, for presenting me the Mensch Award on behalf of the Mensch International Foundation. Thank you. I'm very moved, and I mean it. I'm very moved. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm thinking of my parents, Shimon and Manja Fenigstein. We're both we're both Holocaust survivors. My father was in Maidanek. Sorry. It was a death camp. And they would be very proud to see me. To see me receiving this honor. I would like to thank my wife, Jessie, my children, Rachel, Simon, Yali, and Dylan, and my grandchildren. That I saw yesterday, no Ernesto. It is their love and support that gives me the energy and strength to follow my passion. I've had the pleasure for the past 31 years to bring Israeli culture to America through the Israel Film Festival. It's an amazing feeling to have you recognize my life work. Thank you. I'd like just uh, to give you uh, maybe some anecdote that I have okay. from the festival. Just a few. I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. I will me, stop me, crying. Me, Mayor and I had lunch a little over a week ago. I'm also a child of a survivor. My father was in Mauthausen. So Mayor started crying. I started crying. The waiter came. He started crying. And he was Italian. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he was crying about. <laughs> So um, we're, we're children of survivors, and it's a very deep thing. Sure. Excuse me for in, saying sure, a few no. things. Yeah, sure. It goes deep into our soul with what our parents survived. And we remember our parents. I don't know if your father had nightmares. My father had nightmares. My mother had nightmares. I used to come home when I was a kid, 10 years old, and my mother um, you know, I was after school waiting for lunch, and she was crying. And I say, what happened? She said, no, I don't know why I'm leaving. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm the only one survived, and like every week at least once, and I didn't know how to help her. But that was the situation. This is why I think Mayor and I and others who are children of survivors do all this because in a, in a certain way, I think so, and I think you do too, mm -hmm. we think that the cup is half full rather than half empty, even though it was totally empty at one time. Mayor, you continue. So, thank you. And um, I can tell you when I started the festival, I came to Boston to study music. <clears throat> and I came up with the idea to do a film festival uh, because some, uh, a professor in BU, in Boston University, asked me to bring two movies because he knew that I am kind of involved in a way in the film industry. And I went back to Israel and I knew Menachem Golan, I don't know if you know him, uh, that passed away already a while ago. He was a big producer and director. 
And uh, I asked him for two movies, and he said, it's going to cost you $1,500. I said, $1,500? This is my tuition. Why are you asking so much money? He said, that's, you know, if you want to be in the business, it's going to cost money. I said, okay. And then somebody asked me, uh, asked me if I'm going to do a film festival. He said, what do you mean a film festival? And he said, you know, you should bring me. I can do your advertising, marketing, everything. I said, that's an interesting idea. And I went back to Boston and started thinking that I really want to do a film festival. And I called it the first New England, New England Israeli Film Festival. It was four days at the Coolidge Corner in Boston, if you know, if you've been in Boston. And uh, I took on myself a $35,000 commitment to put together this festival when it was very hard to pay a tuition. Uh, I remember that I woke up one time and it happened to me just once in my life. I was kind of sweating in the middle of the night and shaking. My whole body was shaking. And I said, what are you doing? Are you willing to die for that? And I said, yes. <clears throat> the commitment was so deep. And that's why I'm continuing. I have more stories, but just one more story that happened in Boston. In my first day, I was very scared that I'm going to lose and I have to maybe run away from Boston because, you know, I couldn't pay all the bills that I have. I didn't know really what I'm doing, but I, you know, wanted to do a film festival. I had six films. Even the film that I showed this year in the festival on its 40th anniversary, the troupe that I'm acting in it, I showed it in the festival there. And I was very proud to show a film that I'm acting in. I mean, it was such an experience for me. But in the first screening, a doctor came to me and asked me if I'm, I, I'm planning to advertise in the Boston Globe. And I told him, no, I don't have money to advertise. It's very expensive. He said, I want everybody in the community to know. And he took a quarter page ad on the Sunday Times. And the last day was five screenings, it was my big day, 600 seats, we had 3,000 people. And I came out with $15,000, I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and I was so excited, I said, if I made it in Boston, maybe I can go to New York. Three weeks later, I went to school and said that I'm leaving. And I took a UL and went to New York. And nine months, la nine months later, I did my first festival in New York. And believe me, every festival, is a challenge from the beginning, even now, when I'm already planning my 32nd film festival here in Los Angeles, it's already a challenge. It's very hard. The first thing that I did today is I went to my chairman, Adam Berkowitz, the head, the co-head of uh, television at CAA, and I asked him, because it was so successful, as he was the chairman, if he will continue another year. And he said yes, and I already felt that it's a good start. So that's the way. It's to do something from nothing and to grow and to build it to be something that the community will enjoy. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you.